What's up guys, it's Eric here. Set 10 has finally been revealed. Riot just dropped this video on the TFT Twitch channel. I'm gonna have a link to it in the description down below if you haven't seen the entire thing already. I'm just gonna be going through it and sort of talking about some of my thoughts on the things that they announced and that kind of stuff. Uh, it should be really, really, I mean, it, it looks really, really cool. I've watched the whole thing, so I'm going to go back and give you guys my reaction for YouTube. So this is the first trade that they showed off. This is KDA. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chase traits. What are our units here? Ari, Akali, Evelyn, Seraphian. They made a KDA Nar and a KDA Kennen. Uh, Lilia, Nico. There's a KDA Nico and KDA Kaisa. One of the things they talked about is actually they made some of these skins for TFT. So I think is maybe Nar and Kennen. These are four TFT skins because, you know, like in the original KDA, they don't really have like a tank. But, you know, Nar, I guess, will be like the tank for KDA. So that made sense. They made a KDA Nar, which is so cool. Uh, they show off these sort of like diagonal hexes for KDA. They didn't actually talk about what exactly these hexes do. I don't really see anything happening right here. Maybe it's like a stat bonus. They got a shield there, but I'm not sure exactly what that is. But there's some kind of, they have these diagonal hexes, so you're going to want to put them in these diagonals. Next, we have true damage. This, I believe they said, gives uh, extra attack Pentakill speed. Are also in the mix. True damage and, and pentakill. Stay true to their names. True damage grants extra attack speed. Extra attack speed. Wait, that can't be right. Ah, this is more like it. <laughs> true damage members are all about style. And will gain a unique okay. bonus. So I guess they power them up as you itemize them. They gain style, or they, they gain attack speed, I guess, unless he's trolling there. And they also gain a unique bonus for each one of them based on how many items they have. So, you know, maybe like Kiana gains extra AD for each item she has, oh, I imagine. For you ask, Akali will be able to. And this is so crazy. Akali can be a true damage or a KDA. In KDA or true damage. Her trait will change based on whichever band is trending at the time. All right, That's heads. crazy. Can't whatever band's trending. So, like, I guess it's just one game she's going to be this and one game she's going to be the other one. Sort of like uh, the Lux in the past that could be... Was that within the same game? I don't remember. Uh, or, you know, something like a like a mutant where, like, one game it has one effect and one game has the other effect. Kills up next. Pentakill? Pentakill members have oh. damage reduction and they bonus about, damage okay. that increases as they score kills. Damage reduction and bonus damage per kill. kill. Then their bonuses will increase again. Just be careful in Yorick's mosh pit. That's then so crazy. So for every kill, they get stacking damage and bonus reduction. So you want some kind of tank, more like tanky carry probably. Looking at a lot of these, they have like Mordekaiser in and there. Team. It's a pretty big vertical as well. We have Karthus, which is they they already spoiled who who cast this Karthus ult, which is really really cool. Who's this Kale? Hale, Karthus, Mordekaiser, Olaf. Who is that? Looks like Nar again. Nar, Nar is a KDA pentakill, I guess. And then Yorick. Really, really cool. Unless there's multiple Nar. Maybe that wasn't Nar that I saw on KDA. I'm not sure. Because this doesn't look like I thought he looked. Um, but yeah, so there's seven pentakill. Uh, and yeah, it's a lot of sort of like melee tanks who like stack up that damage reduction and extra damage. But you do have the backline carry in the, the Karthus, who's a Four cost, I believe they said, um, right? And then, uh, and then Kale, I'm not sure. Maybe another one cost. She looks kind of small and like she's just autoing, so I'm not sure. Next we have, um, this is this is Heart Steel. This is the new like boy band that Fresh they just uh, had a music video for. Their mark on the convergence. These guys are ready to bring the energy and do whatever it takes for their fans. They may have started out underground, but they're certainly able to underground. And the lobby to the top of the come. charts so this is the this is the the loot trait this set this is like underground um this is like fortune where it's like a lost streak trait and then when you uh win it cashes you out i heard actually that this trait it rewards you for having good losses which sounds so cool like if you have like a one unit loss you're gonna get more rewarded than if you have like a 10 unit loss so it, it it's like the most skill intensive lost streak trait based on what i've heard that, that we've ever had, which seems so sick. This is also really, really cool. It's like Sugar Rush. This is, what was this, like Lulu and Ziggs? Ziggs make up the jittery, ridiculous, hyper pop duo hyper -pop Glitter Bomb. Glitter Bomb. Speaking of original TFT skins. But yeah, look at this. Rumble okay, so this was a different. There's a whole new class, super fans, who show off their fandom with style. Is this? No, that must be Nar. Transform. More on that later. 
fight oh okay so it was nar more of their items into radiant items but that's cool okay and so these are super fans which is probably like these little guys as well they give your biggest uh, champion, which we'll talk about later, your uh, your headliner, they give them a Radiant item. They transform them to Radiant. Isn't this bard, sick too? Is a new Bard skin? Jazz, Jazzy Bard? As they sound. That's so cool. Before I get into the mechanics, let's head backstage to learn more about how we made some of these traits Okay, and, they're, they're, and they talk about how they made the skins. And like, it's really cool. Like, yeah, we, we made skins and stuff. Uh, but that, but you know, like, who cares that much about that? <laughs> All right, the mechanics. The mechanics are crazy for this set. When deciding which blah blah blah. First, they're going to talk about portals. Portals are returning this set. They confirmed it. Uh, Mortog actually like leaked that they were coming back. So portals are returning. But as you can see, they look almost like the portals from uh, from Serpentine River. Um, they're a little bit more underwhelming, right? So, like, this one has a tome on it. This is, like, you get a tome of traits. Uh, or this is, like, support. Like, you probably get a support item. So, it's, it's like the portals from this set, but, like, small. Because they don't want to, like, bloat the game with, like, the, the insane portals and everything else. So, it's going to be portals, but they're going to be lower impact than current portals. You know, maybe everyone gets, uh, Mortog gave an example of one where everyone just gets a completed item anvil. So, like, very, very low impact compared to this set. Uh, but portals still existing. No starting carousel for this set either. Also, look at this starting, uh, carousel as well. Look how cool it is. It's got freaking Rainbow Road in the background. Wait, what the hell? Um, but yeah, I think this is a cool way to bring back portals. Uh, without having it like bloat the mechanics of the set so i think you know they like good, good job on this one mort uh they revealed that scuttle puddle is actually coming back i heard that some more portals are actually coming back which like really really cool um so really really hype to uh to hear that as well that portals are going to be coming back legends are not going to be coming back a lot of people happy about that um and then one more thing one more thing and here i'll just i'll give it away i'm talking about Headliners. Headliners. Our fresh take on the chosen mechanic from Fates. It's chosen. Now, I never played with chosen. Um, really. I played a few games on it. I really got into TFT in set five, which is after set four, which is where chosen went crazy. I, I don't know how many of you guys in the comments actually have played with chosen versus haven't played with chosen, but I'll let him chat about it a little bit. Board. They appear occasionally in shops and are purchased at two stars. Do you see this? It, it'll show up in your shop. It's more expensive, like a dragon. Uh, but it's a two-star unit that you're buying. So this is a four-cost Akali. You get an Akali 2 in your shop. And you can also see it has this little highlight around one of her traits. It gives you an extra of that trait when you field her. Headliners have tons of what immediate a cool. power. Wow, that animation's and sick. They give you plus one to one of their traits. But here's where headliners diverge from Chosen. This is sick. Each one will have a specific headliner effect that empowers them in a way that only a true fan would appreciate. Take Bard from the Jazz Trio, who improvises a few notes to either heal an ally or deal a bit of damage. When Bard is your headliner, every 10 casts will generate a meep that allows him to play one extra note on his first cast of combat. Bard is the type of headliner that will scale into the end game, whether that's isn't that sick? So every it's almost like when you when you have a headliner, you get a hero augment for that unit, right? Uh, I've heard these aren't super super like insane. It's not like on the level of hero augments where it's like giga transformative for every single one, but every headliner gets a unique bonus, which to me seems kind of crazy. They're gonna have to balance all of these headliners' unique bonuses, which seems very very difficult. But if they keep them like relatively low impact, I. Th think it'll be fine uh but that's something crazy that they're doing this set where every single headliner has a unique bonus for when they uh when, when you get them as as your headliner which is really really wild so that is like the main new set mechanic for this set is that these headliners they're chosen it's chosen back this is yorick's chosen where you see he summons these ghouls and they're actually like bigger if he's your headliner and i'm also getting okay maybe i'll do like 1.5 times speed maybe that was too much to, to do um but yeah really 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 cool stuff uh chosen back what do you guys think about this i know a lot of people chosen is really like a, a love it or hate it kind of thing um some people were like oh my god chosen it's the best mechanic of all time i wish we could go back to chosen other people oh you know like we say chosen suck we we hate them 
Uh, a lot of people like them for the flexibility it brought to TFT, where you would have a chosen in the early game and you would play around that, but then you would pivot into a new chosen later in the game. And it's also sort of, it reminds me of like Treasure Dragon almost, where like if you're rolling down and like say, say we were playing this set and I really wanted like an Azir chosen because I was playing around Shurima and I was like, okay, I'm going to play Shurima. But then in your shop, you get a Mordekaiser chosen. You can then pivot into that Mordekaiser chosen, right? And be like, oh my God, well, I have to play around this. So like the chosens that you get offered incentivize you to pivot into different things. I think that's really, really cool. I'm very, very hyped for what this does to the game because I've heard that it really, really encourages flexibility. Uh, though a lot of people have said that it was also like really, really bad, you know, that like uh, high rolling a chosen could absolutely like decide your game basically. So... You know, like that's that's like an aspect of it that people. Oh my God, is that Annie back? Goth Annie, I just saw there. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff to see here. Caitlyn, we have Caitlyn. There's Seraphine, Jinx. Uh, there's there's Bard that looked like Samira. Corky is back. That's a TF. Zach, uh, Vex. Uh, ooh, MF with a with a what what's the emote with the boiling eyes uh skin like uh, MF here with a really interesting setup uh who is that Ezreal oh that was uh that was Ezreal Heartsteel Ezreal blinking around oh I'm so hyped I'm so hyped for all this stuff dude look I'm like look at it flex my neck like that um but yeah I'm really really interested to see how Chosen's um end up going this set uh what some uh something that they also mentioned before we go into the music section which is really cool I mean I'll, I'll let it play out a little bit because like just to give you guys something to watch to like make your brain go boom and release juice but I'll talk about it they talked about the fact that in previous sets chosen, you could only have one chosen at a time um, and no chosens would appear in your shop uh, during that time that you had bought your chosen. So you'd have to make the conscious effort to sell your chosen and then find another chosen in a shop. Uh, it's actually different this set where you if uh, if you don't have a chosen, then every single shop will have a chosen in it to sort of like guarantee that you could find a chosen that you want. Um, and the other thing is that you will still see chosens in your shop. Every four shops, you will see a chosen, even if you have a chosen on your board, which is really, really cool. Uh, it means that, you know, you do still have the ability to pivot, uh, even, you know, without already selling your carry. Now, this is something really cool that they're talking about. Honestly, it's probably just best if I, if I play the audio for it for you on these little sections they have here, cause it's crazy. Well, they're talking about the we'll sound design of this set, which is really, really sick. All of the traits and origins as you put them in, they have different melodies that overlap. It's really, really cool. Starting so just like, disco band, here, listen to this. Knobs. Their trait gives you a placeable disco ball that will heal your allies and grant them attack speed. As you get later into the game, you can add in more disco knots to strengthen the trait. Then you could add in a destructive splash of pentakill for a killer keytar solo. <laughs> <Sorry over it. laughs> now let's talk a bit about the tracks we wrote. Isn't that sick? So so during the game, you're like building, and this is just completely aesthetic. This is just for fun. You're sort of like building music as you play through the game. I heard uh, from, from people who play tested this that this was really, really cool and like would incentivize you to turn off the Spotify and you're just gonna turn on TFT. This is, this is a five cost, by the way. This is five cost gin and he plays a little like- Classical music. He plays a he plays a like a violin solo. This sound was the perfect fit for a trait that deals. We have an example of that. I don't think they had an example of it. But they just have it playing in the background. But yeah, five cost Jin, and what they also spoiled for five cost Jin, his ability uh, or something about him, his his special trait allows him to do extra player damage, extra like almost the reverse of Soraka from Dragonlands, where she would heal you. He's actually going to deal more damage to players. Now this is. This is really sick, man. They they show they have some clips of them like going to the studios and recording this. Just like listen to this, man. Like, oh. There are a total of, I believe. It sounds so good. Authenticity is both a goal doing. I just want some more clips of them playing the music. But, I don't know. They and is able to be recognized. It really sounds like they knocked it out of the park with the music. Just the drums are playing, or if this in the background music. Oh, that sounds so good. One of the cool things. About I cannot wait. I cannot wait to hop into game and and play with some of these sounds. Like, oh, it seems so cool. 
since oh here 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 like here it's very cool <laughs> we have also discovered that a violin solo on top of Jason's EDM track is very cool. Very cool. And we would It just looks those Oh well. man. The the visuals, the sounds, like I feel like they knocked the the look and feel of this set out of the park. And then I can't wait. I can't wait to actually play like play around uh some of these traits and stuff like this and and play around with chosen which is something that i like i said i i came in at set five i never really got a chance to play around chosen that much um so i don't really know like how chosen feels to play around but it it seems really really fun uh really really sick um so i'm absolutely hyped for that this is a new arena that they're showing off oh before this they showed off uh chibi set chibi set uh chibi heartbreaker set or heart steel is it is uh set is gonna be the new Little Legend. So any set fans out there, uh, pretty cool. Uh, like, look at this uh, cutscene. The cutscene is pretty sick. Um, oh, he's got little emojis there. I didn't even see this. And then they're gonna have KDA. Uh, this KDA Arena is gonna be their legendary arena, which looks pretty cool as well. I don't know if it'll it'll if uh, it'll steal me away from everything goes on. Though I'm kind of worried about everything goes on, by the way, uh, because it plays music. The Akali. The uh, Akali Little Legend looks so sick. It, it was doing the Akira uh, slide, like oh my god. And then you also have uh, Kaisa, which they're doing a uh, they're doing like a legendary Kaisa skin, one of those giga expensive. I, I think this is like the giga expensive five hundred dollar Little Legend for this set. Oh, one thing they also spoiled in this about the cosmetics actually is that they're looking at ways to bring back the ability to purchase to just straight up purchase the the, the content that you want outside of having to it sounds like outside of having to, to spin for the loot which is really really sick so like we we might actually have uh ways to like directly purchase these little legends which is something that a lot of people have been asking for uh they talk about the passes they say they're gonna be two passes per set because every set's four months now so we're gonna have like two two month passes uh, instead of one three month pass so six passes a year that's a lot of moolah going towards the passes but okay uh they're bringing mobile to southeast asia which is cool um, they talk about the ranked change, uh, which they're adding platinum. Is it not platinum? Platinum exists. They're adding emerald to, uh, to TFT. Uh, and they talk about the Vegas Open, which, I mean, they didn't really actually say anything new about Vegas Open. They're like, Vegas is happening. It's going to be cool. And we're going to have some stuff there. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the end of their video. They actually brought Mort in for a Q and A. Uh, he said some pretty cool stuff that I already told you about. I think the only thing that he said that I didn't tell you about already is the fact that they're changing the leveling curve. Um, so for, for it's going to be easy, easier to go. He said level six, seven, eight, and nine, I believe. And they said this, they spoiled this in um, the Dev Learnings article, I think. They, they spoiled this at some point, that level 10 is going to be a permanent addition to the game. So every game you're going to be able to go level 10 if you have the right gold. I'm so hyped for this. They said... Uh, like more, many more people, like level eight is the new standard. Like many more people are going level eight now. I'm so, so hyped for people going level eight. Like I am, uh, I, I can't wait to the, for the return of fast eight TFT. I hated, I hated all these patches this set where we just have every single patch. We're stuck going level seven and rolling it down to zero. So I cannot wait. I am, I'm so hyped for the possibility that we're going to go back to fast eight meta. Like, please bring me back to fast eight, fast eight. Or maybe even fast nine meta. Oh, like I'm I feel like I'm at my best when I'm playing fast eight, fast nine metas. So I cannot wait for that as well. Uh one other thing that they uh were talking about, uh that, that some people have talked about is also potentially changing the size of the um uh, they they mentioned this, but they said they're they're shipping this normally. The size of the pools for the champions. So for example, you know, there's 18 three costs in the pool. Uh there's 10 uh five costs in the pool they said they might actually change these uh which is really really interesting uh they said they're gonna start with just default and then maybe change them into the set so really really interesting that we might actually get be getting some some pool shaken up i i don't know if they were thinking of going up or, or going down i know some of the playtesters got to play test with the new pools uh and that uh i've heard that it was a big big shake up but i don't know what it actually is like if it's in what direction it is but that's another area that could be really interesting increase the i mean like for example if you decrease the number of four costs in the pool that makes it much harder to play contested four costs if you increase that it makes it easier same thing with three costs uh and you know on and on and on uh or like maybe decrease one cost make it harder to be contested one cost reroll but also if you decrease the number of one cost in the pool and my god this thing keeps blurring up hello 
Uh, if you decrease the number of one costs in the pool, it makes it worse when you're contested, but better if you're uncontested, I think? I don't know if that actually holds true. Smarter people than me will figure that out. Um, but yeah, those are those are pretty much uh, all the changes. I don't think I forgot anything. If I forgot anything, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, I'll have a link to this Twitch VOD uh, in the description if you guys want to watch the entire thing for yourself because there's a ton of really cool stuff in here. You can hear more of the music. You can see, uh, like, I don't know, they showed off so many of the champions, uh, like some clips of the gameplay, and it looks so cool. I really love it. I got Yone here, Cassante. Um, like, I can't wait. This is showing off a little bit of the, the new heart steal uh, and like stacking up the heart steal. That's Riven? That's, that's RK Riven? Oh, I think I see. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, Scythe Man. Uh, we have, tr that's, uh, Senna. Oh, I can't wait to play around with all these units. Oh, just to talk about when this is going to go live. Uh, Tuesday is when everything is going to be revealed about the set, I believe. Uh, when all the people who got to play test can show off everything. Um, and I've also heard that potentially the set, oh, I didn't even talk about this. I didn't even talk about country. I, I can't believe I forgot to talk about this. Country is, and you know, we, we have Tom Kench, you have this Thresh, it's all like the Western skins and stuff. It's a summon trait. They summon a Hecarim. It looks like it's not that big of a vertical. I only see four here, unless they're like hiding some of them, but it's a summon trait, like, like an innovator. Oh, I love that stuff. I love that stuff in the past, like Cultist. Uh, I, I love these traits in the past, so I'm so happy to see another summon trait in the set because it's been a sec since we've had one. Okay, that's everything that I'm going to say. Um, Tuesday is when all this information is going to go live and maybe PBE is going to drop. I will definitely be live Wednesday. I have a concert to go on Tuesday, so I'll, I'll try to put some stuff out Tuesday uh, when the embargo drops and we record a video. And then Wednesday, I'm going to be live grinding out PBE because I have to go to the Vegas LAN in a little over a month. So I need to grind up on PB. Me and Kai are super hyped to start grinding and studying together. I'm sure people like Joe Bookmark as well are gonna be super hyped for the set uh, and are gonna wanna study. So we're gonna study really hard for PB. I am going hard in on this set. I have decided I'm going to no life this set when it drops. Um, so hopefully I can be the best player I can be, get high elo at the start of the set, go to Vegas LAN, smurf on everybody, win $100,000. Uh, and quit my job and play TFT full time. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's the plan. In any case, thanks everybody for watching this video. Let me know what you're most excited about in the description down or in the comments down below, what your experience of Chosen was in the past, that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.